For thousands of years, humans were terrified of and fascinated by their feared yellow sun god. In reality, our sun is, yes, a god, obviously, but not yellow, or orange, or white. It burns a green-blue color, but the Earth's atmosphere scatters certain color wavelengths, making the sun appear yellow, or white, or orange. This wavelength scattering is also what makes the sky appear blue when children sing. Once created in the sun's core, the light takes 30,000 years to reach the surface, and then 8 minutes to reach us on Earth. So you are always seeing the sun 8 minutes in the past, and the sunlight is older than some people think the Earth is. But our enormous blue-green sun god is only one of literally billions of other stars in our galaxy, let alone the septillion of stars in the hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe. But let's just focus on our own galaxy. Red dwarfs are the most plentiful type of star in the galaxy, and yet they're too dim to see in the night sky. The stars we do see are the biggest and brightest the Milky Way has to offer, the ones who go to Harvard and get football scholarships. For example, picking one at random, here's G2V, an average-sized star, but about 85% brighter than the other stars in its galaxy. Uh, no, that's our sun. <clears throat> Okay, so aside from our sun god, the closest star to Earth is Alpha Centauri, which is actually three stars. In fact, about 50% of all stars in the galaxy are part of multi-star systems, just like science fiction taught you. Let's pick another at random, even though clearly we picked these ahead of time. HR2061, a red supergiant that is commonly known as Betelgeuse. So large that if it were our own sun, it would engulf the Earth and extend past the asteroid belt. The ninth brightest star in the night sky, Betelgeuse, is primed to go supernova at any moment, today or one million years from today. Though it's 640 light years away, which means that what we see actually happened 640 years in the past. If we see Betelgeuse light up today, it means that it actually went supernova in the 14th century, and we just couldn't see it yet. And what will it look like? Well, in 1054, a supernova, SN 1054, went supernova, and was recorded by Chinese astronomers as a bright light that shone in the sky for about two years. It then coalesced into a nebula of gas and dust that we now call the Crab Nebula, because it totally looks like a crab and not at all like an amorphous blob of gas and dust. And that's just six stars, each incredible in their own way, each brimming with possibility. You know, hydrogen and stuff. Six. Six out of 300 billion. Some are just like our sun god, some are one one-hundredth the size of Milwaukee, and some are almost too big to imagine. For example, VY Canis Majoris is so big that it would engulf our sun and all the planets up to Saturn, which incidentally has such a low density that it would float in water. So the next time your younger sibling is drowning, throw Saturn at them. Subscribe, and you'll succeed. Success, success is subscription. That's what I'm trying to get across here. <laughs>